Another alert, another reminder, America is out of Kabul. The Taliban are in control this morning, and we've been getting new video from the airport. Outraged Republican lawmakers demanding President Biden resign. Congressman Jim Banks left the Indiana State Senate to deploy in Afghanistan. That was seven years ago, 2014. Congressman is with us now. Sir, hello to you. And I don't know if you heard the interview with Admiral Kirby a moment, before, uh, a moment ago. Uh, President Biden speaks this afternoon. What's he going to say? Well, your, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I, I heard the interview with Admiral Kirby, and just like the interviews that I heard yesterday from the Secretary of State, from General McKinsey, this administration still has no idea how many Americans they have left behind. You heard Admiral Kirby a little bit ago say around 100. Earlier in the day on another program, he said a few hundred Americans are still left behind. Yesterday, the Secretary of State in his speech last night, he said it's less than 200, closer to 100. But earlier in the day, he said 250. And then you have General McKinsey say it's in the few hundreds. That was his quote. This administration still has no idea how many Americans are still in Afghanistan who, who want, these are the Americans who have reached out, who want to get out of the country, but they were unable to. And now that the evacuations have ended, they won't be able to, and they're directly in harm's way. Meanwhile, the Biden administration, I hear, here's what you are going to hear the president say, just like Admiral Kirby and others, this administration is going to continue their victory lap which is un unfathomable that the administration would claim victory at this point, knowing that there are hundreds at least of Americans who are still trapped in Afghanistan behind enemy lines. Congressman, uh, the president himself might not say this, but the head of the Democratic National Committee said this last night, President Biden accomplished what no president has been able to, ending a 20-year-long war. So that's where they're going. And they're, uh, they're banking on Americans moving on, focusing on COVID and the economy. Um, but one of the things the Wall Street Journal editorial board said today is that accountability for the evacuation, for the end of this, has to start now. Will it start now in Congress? Well, Republicans are going to force it. I mean, let me tell you, I'm, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. Last night, I met with Leader McCarthy and about 40 of the Republicans who are all veterans, spanning from the, the war in Vietnam to post 9-11 Afghanistan and Iraq veterans like myself. Um, we got together last night and, ha and held a meeting uh, late into the evening. We're going to meet here in a couple of hours and go to the floor in a pro forma session and demand action by this Congress. I don't know if Speaker Pelosi's in Washington or not. I'm, I'm guessing she's not. But Republicans are here demanding accountability and demanding that, this, that, that the Congress do whatever it can to support this administration to get every American out of Afghanistan. While, while the administration is claiming victory, there are still Americans who have been left behind. We are about 10, 11 days from the anniversary of 9-11, 20 years removed. We asked Admiral Kirby a moment ago about whether or not America is more safe. Jen Psaki was asked that question yesterday as well. Watch the exchange. Is the U.S. more or less safe today than we were before the Taliban took over? Well, again, we are not going to do anything that's going to allow terrorists to grow or prosper in Afghanistan or any terrorist organization. That continues to be the president's commitment and his order to his U.S. military over the past several days and the actions that CENTCOM have announced show that he's going to deliver on that promise. Our, our track record of watching these terror groups when we're not there is not great. How do we do what she just described? Yeah, you can't. We, we are now watching right before our eyes the rise of ISIS a second time. By the way, Lloyd Austin was the general who oversaw the rise of ISIS when they pulled out of Iraq. Now he's the Secretary of Defense overseeing the rise of ISIS again in Afghanistan. And this isn't a threat that we didn't know about. I mean, as a member of the Armed Services Committee and going back to Afghanistan as a member of Congress, we've been briefed many times on the ISIS-K threat in Afghanistan. This administration knew this was going to happen. They knew that if you gave control back to the Taliban, it would allow for a safe haven and an environment where ISIS-K would rise up and pose a direct threat to the homeland, to the United States of America. The generals told us that, that, that ISIS-K isn't interested in necessarily just in uh, terrorist attacks in Afghanistan. They want to attack the United States of America. That's their plan. And the Biden administration is giving them safe haven, the ability to rise up and pose that threat once again. And that's why what Admiral Kirby said was so uh, astonishingly um, uh, idiotic when he talked about how these weapons aren't lethal weapons that we've left behind. We left behind guns and ammunition, a number, uh, 
by thousands of military vehicles, night vision goggles. All of those weapons are going to be used against Americans when we're forced to go back and eradicate the threat of ISIS-K once again.